For 70 years, we've languished in a bitter, partisan, unproductive battle over how to fix America's healthcare system. Directly or indirectly, both left and right have steered the conversation toward coverage, the number of people with insurance cards, while mostly ignoring quality of care and how much it actually improves health. To get this debate out of its rut, we need this new goal, to produce better health for more people at lower cost year after year. To start, we have to recognize that the real dispute isn't between left and right, it's between philosophies I call the fortress and the frontier. Let's define them. The fortress has two goals. First is to imagine all the terrible things that might go wrong in healthcare and prevent any of them from happening. Second is to shield those in the medical industry, doctors, hospitals, insurers, drug and device manufacturers from potential competitors who might threaten their turf. Frontier is different. It understands that big quality improvements and cost reductions don't come without accepting some risk. And it understands that real innovation won't occur unless doctors and hospitals face new competitors like IBM faced Apple and Western Electric faced Blackberry. While left and right think of themselves as radically different, both are deep in the fortress. To illustrate fortress and frontier, let's do a little thought experiment. Get in a time machine, go back to 1989. Tell your family how healthcare has improved in 25 years. Statins, new vaccines, face transplants. They'll appreciate the new technologies, but won't be all that surprised. That's the fortress. Now, and you're still in 1989, tell them what's ahead in IT. Tell them how inexpensive these things are. Now, they'll think you're delusional. That's the frontier. Wait, you say, the two industries aren't comparable. Healthcare is life and death, pain and suffering. Computers, they're harmless. They just sit on your desk. Really? On the internet, you'll find financial fraud, identity theft, predators, violations of privacy, cyber bullies, Cell phones have served as tools of crime and terrorism. Does this make you wish the internet and cell phones would go away? I doubt it. For an interconnected world and all of the benefits that come with it, we take risks and accept costs, and we allow upstarts in garages to challenge multinationals in skyscrapers. In 25 years, we've gained near universal access to information technology. That didn't require a long, vicious congressional debate. No cumbersome mandates. No one had to ask innovators to innovate, and innovators didn't have to beg bureaucrats for permission to create. Our challenge now is to move healthcare out of the fortress and onto the frontier, to make healthcare as dynamic as IT has been in our lifetime. That means accepting some risks and allowing genius to arise from unknown people in unexpected places. Make no mistake, enormous changes are coming soon to healthcare. Transplantable organs made of your own cells, drugs tailored to your individual DNA, microscopic robots inside your body repairing the genes that threaten your life. Are we willing to move American healthcare to the frontier so it can lead the way toward these new technologies? Or are we gonna remain in the fortress and let other countries seize the high ground? We have time to choose, but not much. We can spend the next 25 years squabbling over insurance cards, but that won't get us to the real goal. Better health for more people at lower cost year after year. I'm Bob Grayboys, and all this is in my new study, Fortress and Frontier in American Healthcare. It's at mercatus.org.